Welcome to part three of my free needle felting video tutorial. In this section, I'm going to be talking about three different types of felting needles and their uses, how to properly hold a felting needle when you're working to avoid breakage and just to get the most efficient use out of it, as well as a safe working surface that you can use for your needle felting projects. So to start off, I have here three different types of felting needles. These are the same felting needles that I use in all of my projects, and this is some of the wool that I use in my felting projects as well. So I have three different triangle shaped needles. Now there are a lot more needles out there of different sizes or gauges, um, as well as different shapes. So I have selected these three because I find that these are all I need when I'm working. Um, and I think that especially if you're a beginner, you don't want to get too confused with all the different sizes and shapes that are out there. And I find that this is a really great um, beginner set of three to work through and just learn how each one functions differently throughout the different parts of your felting project. So the first one I have is a number 36T. So if you look at all the numbers here and you can see they're all color coded too. Um, because if you're anything like me, you probably you might lose them. I do all the time, and then at least I know what size it is. Um, so the T on the end, though, that refers to the shape of the needle at the end. So, you know, the top part of the round of the needle is round and cylindrical, but at the bottom part, it's actually triangular. So the T stands for the triangle. So this part at the end, the part that's sharp and then has the barbs, is three-sided. There's barbs on each side. The 36 refers to the gauge, or the thickness of the needle. So the lower the number, actually the thicker the needle is. So you'll always want to start a felting project with the thickest needle. So I always start with a 36T. Now a 36T is great for beginning because it does really fast felting work. Um, it, it does a lot of coarse work so that if you're just trying to build up bulk for the base of your project, it's going to felt really quickly for you. Um, it's also really great for attaching pieces together. So say you're making an animal and you've got the body and you want to attach the legs, you can use this type of needle to do that. Um, you use it to start though because, because it is, it's the thickest of the needles, it will leave the most marks or holes in your project. So it's great for starting because it works quickly and gets you going. But you'll want to move on to the next needle when you're ready to add a bit more detail or um, do some, some finer shaping of your piece. So the next one I have is a number 38T. So the, again, the T, that's the same. It has three sides on the bottom, the barbs on each side. But the 38 is a little bit thinner than the number 36. So this one is a really great all-purpose felting needle. Um, you can use it for shaping. You can use it even for some detailing. So there are some people out there I know who only use a 38T for their entire project. I prefer to use all three, but this is a really great all-purpose needle because it kind of does a little bit of everything. Um, but I use it for the bulk of the middle of my project. So after I've done the major shaping, getting the basic form I want with the number 36T, I'll move on to this 38 and do a lot of my project the shaping, even some detailing, layering of colors with this one. And then the last one I use is a number 40T. So again, T, it's got the triangle, it's three-sided with the barbs at the end. The only difference is that this one is a little bit thinner than the 38. So this is a great needle for doing maybe a little bit of shaping towards the end of your project if you've got some smaller areas. Um, but mostly really fine surface detailing is what this needle is used for. So I personally, when I get towards the end of a project, I will always take one of these 40T needles and go over pretty much the whole surface, if not to do some final shaping here and there, details, um, at least to just go over the whole surface and get it really nice and smooth and uniform. So those are the three felting needles um, sizes and the shape that I recommend, especially if you're just starting out because it's, it's nice and basic and it helps you learn 
um, when to work through those different needles in your project. Now, let's see, I'm going to take back up my 36. So how do we properly use a felting needle? I've got a little bit of wool here just to demo on for you. So I'm just going to roll it up a little bit, hold it. So you always, when you're felting, want to hold the needle perpendicular to wherever you're going into the wool. So you always want to be going into it straight, in other words. Um, so poking into it. If you try and bend or twist the needle when it's in the wool, you're going to break your tip right off. Um, and that's just a pain. So always go straight in. It doesn't mean that you can't work from the side. You can. It's just that you have to go in straight rather than working from the side by twisting and digging at it like that. So just always make sure that you're going in straight to the area that you're trying to work on. The other thing to note is that when you poke the needle in, you really only need to poke it in as far as the barbs go. So it's usually, you know, about a half an inch up from the tip of the needle. If you poke it in further than that, you're just giving yourself more work. You're making the fibers push out on the other side. You can see that if I push it all the way through, it actually pushes the fibers right through. And if you push it in too far, you're getting that thicker, rounder part of the needle above the tip, and it's going to leave big holes in your project. So you can see that it's leaving a lot more marks that way if you push it too far in. So to do it most efficiently, you really only need to poke it in as far as the barbs are making contact with the wool. And of course you can adjust the pressure. Say I'm trying to flatten out an area. I might push in a little bit harder. I might, I might push that far into um, the foam pad. But even so, I'm still at that thin part. I'm really only pushing in the tip of that needle. And that'll give me the most efficient use of my needle. Now the last thing I want to show you in this video is the surface to work on. So this is high density foam. This is what I use to do all my felting projects on. Um, this one's about an inch and a half thick, so I recommend something at least that thick. Sometimes you can find it even thicker, but this seems to work fine for me. So the purpose for this is to protect yourself and or your working surface. So a lot of times needle felting is very portable and I'll often do it on my lap. So I'll put this right on my lap. That makes it so that I don't press the needle into my lap. Um, if you're working on a nice table, you don't want to be pressing your needle into the table. That's going to blunt your needle and scratch up your table, probably break your needle. So you always want to have some kind of um, working surface directly underneath your wool that has some give and some softness. But the nice thing about this is that it's really, um, it's high density. So it has a little bit of give. It almost has the feeling of memory foam. So it, it's very firm, but you can press into it. So it just pairs really nicely with the wool to give a good firm backing surface that has just the amount of give you need when you're working through your projects. So the needles, um, all the wool, as well as the foam pads that I use are all available on my website, grayfoxfelting.com. Um, you can also reach out to me there with any questions you have through my contact page. So next up, I'm going to show you how to blend some colors together.